Hey everyone, Marty Snyder, Dale Jarrett, and Nate Ryan joining you here. So after Sonoma wraps up this weekend, Nate, we take over on NBC with 20 straight weeks of uh, NASCAR. Can't wait for that to happen. Conveniently packaged in 10 races left before the playoffs and then the 10 races of the playoffs. So what are you looking forward to most, Nate, in the second half of the season? Yeah, I think it starts with the second race in the NASCAR and NBC side of the season, Marty. And of course, that's the inaugural Chicago street race on the streets of the Windy City, uh, right near Grant Park. Uh, I think we're all curious <laughs> how this is going to unfold. You know, I had Jeff Burton on the NASCAR and NBC podcast this week, and he described it as the super speedway of street courses. He thinks it's going to be extremely fast. I mean, when NASCAR raced at Chicagoland Speedway, that was that track's MO was speed. And I think we're going to see a similar type discussion now with the race moving to the, the streets downtown Chicago and I just think that it, it's going to be really, really exciting for NBC to be a part of this because it's not too often, DJ, that you have inaugural events in the Cup Series. I know, you know, during your career, the 90s, it seemed like there were there were new tracks, there were new races every year, but it doesn't happen nearly as much. And to have something to be historic where it's not just an inaugural race, first time in downtown Chicago streets, but to be the first street race ever uh, in Cup Series history, it's a big, I think, feather in the cap for NASCAR and NBC. Yeah, you're right. Uh, exactly, Nate. And I had the good fortune of, of going up a few weeks ago, uh, May 31st, and and being a part uh, of a media event there and actually going and seeing the site. I got so excited after being there. Uh, th this is going to be something like nothing else that we've seen in these 75 years. Of course, yeah, it is the first street race, but the, the sights, the sounds, uh, the opportunities for fans to, to really get close to the action uh, with, a, with an incredible view here. Just going to be uh, amazing to, to go watch that and, and see how these drivers, you know, I was going around in a, in a passenger car and just seeing what they're going to have to navigate there. And I think you're right. Jeff Burton brought up about uh, some high speed parts. Yeah, there's some areas that we can see three and four wide racing. But, you know, at the end of that three and four wide racing part of the track, uh, there's always going to be a right-hander or a left-hander that you have to slow down a lot for. Uh, so this is going to create some issues for these drivers, high braking areas, but it's also going to mean that we're going to see some contact in, in part of this. So I think we're in for an exciting weekend. I believe uh, that that they've already sold tickets to uh, for fans from all 50 states. And mm. uh, that's just incredible, uh, the excitement about this. I'm excited if you couldn't tell about uh, this happening and, and looking forward to, to getting there and uh, watching these drivers navigate on just the streets of Chicago. Just incredible. And one other thing that I'm looking forward to in, in our part of the season, Marty, you mentioned that, yeah, we have 10 races leading up to the playoffs. But in those playoffs, are, are we going to see a first-time champion? I really believe we have that opportunity. I realize that that you've got Kyle Larson uh, out there ready to, to grab another one. Joey Logano is sitting there poised to do that. But how about, you know, you can come up with four or five names. William Byron being one of those. Uh, Ryan Blaney being one. Uh, Ross Chastain, I believe you have to keep in the mix there. And, of course, Tyler Reddick with that. So uh, I believe that the chances are really high that we're going to have a first-time champion in this year. That's an interesting point, Nate. What do you think about that? I mean, I think certainly you could easily make the case for William Byron with the year he's having so far. Yeah, I think, you know, William Byron certainly is is top of mind, Marty. Uh, you know, Tyler Reddick, I think, is still lurking out there, although I know he hasn't had as much uh, success since his victory at Circuit of the Americas. I still think that, you know, he's somebody that a lot of people have talked about this season as a generational talent. Uh, and, you know, I, I think it still remains to be seen. I'm still really curious what's going on with track house racing as NASCAR and NBC picks up the NASCAR schedule. I think, you know, whether Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez, but particularly Chastain, you know, he had that run where he led so many races and then just had, you know, run-ins with other drivers or things go wrong. Since Darlington, it doesn't seem like he's been the same driver. So uh, I think him making the championship for last year, uh, there's going to be a lot of questions coming down through the end of the regular season and in the playoffs, presuming Ross Chastain makes the playoffs. Can he regain that swagger, that mojo that he had last season? And, and I'll get more granular on that, Nate. How about since Rick Hendrick called him out? I mean, how does he get his momentum back? How much of uh, that is going to be on your mind as we start the second half of the season? Yeah, I, I think you know, I'd love to hear DJ's thoughts on this. I mean, it does seem as if Ross Chastain is raced differently. 
I had Jeff Burton on the NASCAR NBC podcast this week, and he talked about that, that when Justin Marks kind of came out after Darlington and said, uh, you know, we love what you're doing, Ross, but we need you to do things differently. Essentially, it was a different stance than I think track house racing has taken with Chastain uh, compared to past times when, you know, Marks was always just, hey, we've got your back through thick and thin. Certainly since the Darlington incident uh, that Chastain had with, you know, the third time a Hendrick Motorsports driver in three weeks and Rick Hendrick coming out and saying that Ross had to race differently. I think that's affected him, DJ. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I would have to say that 99% of the time when Mr. Hendrick speaks, you want to listen. But this is that 1% that Ross Chastain cannot listen. Um, you, you might take it, put it in your mind, and then toss it out. Uh, because you have to race the way that you race. Uh, you can't let others, uh, and especially other owners, be affecting how you go about your business and your driving style. I, I promise you that that through the years that that Kel Yarborough didn't care what another owner, uh, Dale Earnhardt didn't care, Daryl Walter didn't care. Uh, you, you you listen to that, you take it to heart, you examine what you need to, and then toss it aside. You have to do what is best for you as a driver, and that's exactly what I think Ross needs to do. I understand he came down. You know that that was. I think that weekend in Darlington was big because he had set himself up to, to go get that win and making one slight miscalculation there uh, kind of turned things around. And, and Nate's exactly right. He hasn't been the driver since then. Uh, Ross needs to get back to being Ross. Well, we're certainly excited to see that. Can't wait to see everyone. NBC picks up the coverage with Nashville in a few weeks. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.